So today is the midterm elections in the United States, and I thought I'll take a break today from the municipal series, which probably will come to its conclusion this weekend or early next week, and talk about elections in Canada versus the elections in the United States. So these peculiar things called midterm elections, um, and Canadians never fully understand what the hell they are. So let's begin by looking at the United States government briefly, and I mean very briefly, um, because you have the president, which is elected by the Electoral College once every four years. Then you have the Congress, consisting of the House of Representatives, which is 400 and some representatives elected to a two-year term. And then about a hundred senators elected to a seven year, a six year term. So, and essentially once every two years, the one third of the Senate and the entire House of Representatives are up for election. If it occurs at the same time as the president's up for election, then it's a presidential election. This happens once every four years. The president, yes, he's not directly elected. He's elected by the um, electoral college, which is elected at the general election. And the seats on the electoral college equals the amount of congressional uh, congress and senators for that state. So the minimum is three. Every state has at least three. The District of Columbia, which doesn't have any representative in Congress or the Senate, has three as well. So, in effect, the entire once every four years you have a presidential election. And then for those off elections, you also have the midterm. Now, the U.S. is also kind of peculiar because it's in federated states, but the elections are all held at the same time in most cases. There is no legal requirement under the Constitution for the states to hold their elections at the same time as the presidential, general, uh, or midterm, but it just happens um, mainly to create an economy. Um, so you, you have, for a midterm election, about 6,000 different elections going on across the United States. The other interesting thing about the midterm elections is that in Canada, so actually before I get into that, let's talk about the Canadian system. So the Canadian system, you have it kind of differently. The provinces set their own election dates. Um, every province and the federal government has an elections agency. Um, and the elections agency is a direct report to that house. So for example, the chief electoral officer does not report to the government of the day but in fact reports to the House of Commons as a whole. They are appointed by the government of the day, <coughs> by resolution of the House of Commons, where they report to the House as a whole. The interesting thing about our election versus the American election is, believe it or not, there's actually no, fed no single federal government agency which is responsible for every single e election in the United States. So, when you talk about Canada, we use the term general election. There's only one election. Um, so in the U.S., you talk about elections and you talk about midterm elections. So the U.S. has every state creates their own method of, of doing an election. Most states, there is not a statewide agency as well, and it's done by some level of sub-state government, usually municipal government. Um, there is some election commissions, 
but they're not as nonpartisan as the elections can be. So, for example, you remember that deal in Florida where you had the Secretary of State saying, I'm going to certify the results no matter what, and I'm, I'm going to get Bush to win no matter what. Well, in Canada, no member of cabinet can interfere in the election, um, and only Parliament as a whole would be able to judge it. The way we elect is we have one choice on the ballot, and that's your MP. You vote for your MP, and that's it. In the U.S., because of the separation of powers, it, it, it can be very complicated. You can vote for your president, you can vote for your Congress, and to confuse matter even more, in some states you vote for, well, every state you vote for senators, you vote for um, state senators, saint, st state congressional representatives, governors, mayors, city councilors, in some states you vote for cabinet, sheriff, there's even a few places you can still vote for dog catcher. So the ballot is far more complicated in the United States. You have far more, for far more officers running for election in any general election in the United States. The other thing that the U.S. does is they put a number of referenda, um, usually using the term ba ballot initiatives or ballot questions or. Um, proposition on the ballot at the same time. And these are full-scale referendum on policy issues taking place alongside the general election. In Flor in California, we've all heard of Proposition 8, which is the same-sex marriage um, constitutional amendment. You also see a few other very interesting ballot questions, and it's easier to get something on a ballot question. In most of Canada, except British Columbia, you, only the government can place something on a ballot question. So for example, the Ontario referendum in 2007, which was held alongside the general election, only the government is able, was able to place that question on. In the United States, you can collect signatures in some sort of direct democracy to place it on. So those are the basic mechanics of both. I, I've simplified things way, way, way. Um, but I wanted to give a th few thoughts about democracy and which system better serves democracy. A lot of people assume the American system of government better serves democracy. This assumption is mainly based on the fact that they have more offices up for election. But do we really want to be electing dog catchers? The simplicity of the Canadian system of election enhances its democracy. It simplifies the issues and simplifies the election so much that the average citizen can make an informed decision at one time. The American system clutters things. It is no doubt why the American system does not have spending limits on campaigns in most cases and turns negative. In Canada we only have to remember to vote for our MP. In the United States, you're faced with a number of choices, all of which will confu can confuse the average voter, never, never alone the veteran political scientist. In the United States, you're faced with elections which expenses are out of control. This election, about $4 billion will be spent on the several races in the Congress and various other levels of government. In Canada, an election costs about $34 million, with each party being limited to around 5 to $10 million on campaigns. 
no Canadian election has ever cost more than about 50 million. So is democracy served better or worse by a system of government which ultimately produces members of the legislature which are lapdogs of special interest who they need to create the opportunity to run again and win. It is hard to see how this system of government benefits the public, never long being understood by the general public. I wish the US all the best this election night. I hope you speak, speak with clear voices and get good representatives. And I, for one, will thank God for the simplicity of our Canadian system.